Welcome back to Homo Studios Python for Beginner series focusing on functions and in this little wrap-up video we're going to introduce the turtle module just to review parameters and arguments. I'm going to be using the repellent online IDE again to be using Python turtle. You can also use something called trinket which I'll talk about when I do a turtle playlist and also let me just mention that I call it repellent the official pronunciation I believe is replit but I'll keep using repellent because that feels natural I'm logged into my repels that's what I'm looking at here and I'm gonna create a new repel and I have to choose Python with turtle because it's a special module that will have kind of a GUI output now keep in mind too that it will output in Python version 2.7 and not 3.6 but that doesn't mean you can't use Python 3 code. It just means there'll be some subtle differences. Like for example, you can't use F strings, but since we're using it as a learning module, primarily, we're not really building a GUI at this time. We should be fine with any differences between the versions. So I'm going to choose Python with turtle and I'll create my repel and I'm going to give it a name and I'll just call it draw square because we're going to be making a, a function. So I'll call it draw square and keep in mind that you don't see files here because in this in this mode when you're working with Python turtle you can't create multiple files and you'll have a console like we normally see and you'll also have this kind of preview area the the result and again I'll talk more about the turtle module in depth later but let's just get started and the first thing we'll have to do is import the turtle module which you could do this way import turtle and it's lowercase turtle and modules are basically Python files, but you don't have to put any extension on them. It'll know to, to pull in this turtle.py file, wherever that is, within the Python install. Now we're using the online. And there are other ways you can do this. You can also do from turtle import all using the asterisk. Then you don't have to prefix things using turtle dot or whatever. But for just now, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go back to just import turtle and what we'll do first is we'll create an instance of a turtle which is basically like a little arrow that you could make move around and draw shapes and things like that so I'm just gonna call it T I'll make it as simple as possible just like a variable name and I'll have to specify the module which is turtle and then the class that we're gonna be using which is the turtle class notice that turtle class has a capital T it has parentheses after that and we're putting the module name first now after we do that if we run this nothing's really gonna happen just yet until we put some characteristics for it or some properties for the turtle nothing will really happen but what we'll do right off the bat since we're talking about functions is let's create a function and we could do that the way we normally do we'll do the the def keyword we'll call it draw square and maybe I'll put a small s here and I'll put my open and closing parentheses I'll put a colon and then it'll begin to indent and what we're gonna do here with our turtle is we're just gonna say T specify the turtle instance that we're working with again this line here is called instantiation we're creating an instance of a turtle that's from object oriented programming which we'll talk about in detail later but what we're gonna do is use one of the turtle methods and there's places where you could go to look up all these methods but one of the basic ones you'll start with is just moving forward and turning left and then you could draw basic shapes with that so we're gonna put in forward which is a method of the turtle class and you have to put in something here you have to put in a distance so I'm just gonna put in 50 for now just so I have something in there it kind of relates to pixels and then I'm also gonna put T dot left and that just means it's gonna turn left at a certain angle and the parameter that has to go in there we're just gonna use 90 right now because we're drawing a square that's at least what I'm starting with right now so if I did that and I ran it nothing would happen because I didn't call my function yet so let's call the function and notice in repel it or replit it'll give me that function name so I just have to put the parentheses there and now if I run the function what it does is it just moves forward and it turns left and it uses a little arrow there you can actually make it a turtle character out of this little shape here that's going to be moving around but we'll do that later we'll just use the little arrow right now so all it did is go forward and turn left and now if it goes forward and turns left forward and turns left forward and turns left it will make a square so we got to do this four times so you could do this you could copy this and repeat those steps four times and run it and it should make a square now obviously we don't want to do that because that's a lot of repetitive code so let's get rid of that 
and let's do something we already know how to do using a for loop. And we're going to say for i in range, and then we'll put a number and we'll use four because we're going to repeat it four times. We need the colon, and we also need to indent these two lines, which are part of the loop, because we're going to loop these two lines, these two commands or methods of the turtle four times. So now if we do this, nothing happens. Let's see, what did we do wrong here? Uh, bad input on line six. Oh, I forgot the I here, so let me put in the I in there. I always do that with in. I always forget the for I and in because I'm you forget to type I twice. But anyway, for I in range, and let's run it again. And I have to go to result to see it. And it'll actually wait for you. And there it is. There's our little square. So we're calling a function. We're running a function. Now, this video was supposed to be about parameters. And we didn't do any parameters yet. We just put parameters in these methods here. But one thing we could do to make things a little more efficient is instead of putting absolute numbers in here that we'd have to change is we could put variables outside of here we could put things like sides anytime we have a number I'll just make a variable and I'm making variables outside of the function right now and we'll talk about that so these are global variables and I'll put distance I'll just put dist equals 50 because that's what I used and then I'll put angle equals 90 so this is using global variables and then we could pass them in here and that's more helpful if these need to change because then you have one place where you could change them and they'll update in here so then you could just put dist or this is sides and this would be angle and maybe I'll just put ang and I'll change this to ang so now I'm sending in global variables in here and you could also put the variables inside the function as local variables that's usually that's usually preferred but let's just see what happens and make sure it works and that's working again we didn't do anything different we're just creating variables so that if we wanted to change these now if we wanted to say oh, let's make it five sides like a pentagon now if we did five it basically just repeats it one more time it doesn't actually make a pentagon that's because the angle would need to change and we'd have to know that in order for the angle to change, we'd have to do 360 divided by the sides. So we could do 360 divided by sides. And let's run this. And now it actually makes a pentagon. So that's sending in global variables into the function and calling the function. Now let's try this with parameters. Now with parameters, they're basically like placeholder variables. So it's kind of pull it, they're local, but they're kind of pulling them out from here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, let's draw a square and let's indicate something that might change. And something that might change might be the sides. So I'll put sides here. That might be one parameter that might change. And also the distance might change. So I'll put distance here. And the angle also might change. But since the angle is being created from sides, I think what I'm going to do here is I could just take this out of here and put it in the function. That way it's a local variable. And I'll put it in here. And now we don't need these because if we're using parameters, you're not going to declare these global variables. What you're actually going to do is send the values as arguments in here. So now that we have two parameters set up up here, sides and distance or dist, you'd have to basically, when you call the function, put in the arguments. So the arguments would be, let's say six, let's say we're gonna make a hexagon and then a comma and the distance, let's make them a little bigger, let's make it 80. So it's a little bit bigger when it does this and it's calculating the angle in here anyway. So whatever we send as the sides, it'll do 360 divided by six and do 60 degrees and work that out by using the arguments down here sending them through the parameters and then actually using those values when the function gets called or run. So there's our hexagon. If we want to make like a stop sign or something, we could go down here and make it eight. And there's our stop sign. So that's using arguments down here. That's using our parameters that we're setting up up here. Now you could put the turtle instance can be created also when you run the function. That would work pretty much the same way. If we, if we put this in here, we could keep it all kind of clean and make the turtle instance be created when we're running the function. That shouldn't change anything. So the idea with parameters is if you're changing some of these values, you change them when you actually call the function. Well, let's try one little thing here before we finish up is let's say we want to make random shapes here instead of just putting these in. Now, if they're random, then you wouldn't necessarily want to 
put them in here because you were you're putting in eight so let's just let's just put in distance right now because that could be one variable that we'll leave we'll take sides out of there and what I'm going to do for sides I'll do this right inside the function but I'll do it after the turtle instantiation and I'll put sides and I'll say equals and let's make it a random number so I'm going to use random dot rand int I don't know if we've used this before but with rand int we can put a range of a random number starting and since we're making polygons we should start at three because that would really be a polygon and let's say we'll go to ten so that would make like a ten sided decagon I believe so if we did that that way we'll, we're creating this in here now if we run this let's see what happens we get an error and it says name error random is not defined on line five so it doesn't like that that's because notice it's just like the it's just like the turtle this is a module name random and we didn't import it so we we can say we can even do this we could put a separate import line or we could say random we can import them both with one line we could do that import turtle module and the random module let's see what happens go to our result and now that works so and we could change the size here because that's our one argument that we're putting in here that's our one parameter that we're adjusting so we could still adjust that if we want to make it a little smaller we could change that and now we'll make another shape now it's making a random shape it's coming up with a random number each time between 3 and 10 actually inclusive of 3 and 10 to do that by using the random module so we're using the random module and the turtle module in here to have this little kind of gooey output and right now we're using a argument of 60 which we're actually sending to represent the distance variable and then it's creating this distance as like a local variable inside this function so that's just a little kind of preview of what we'll be doing with turtles and the turtle module and we'll be doing more with that I'll make a whole playlist of turtles so you can work with that again that's just a little review of using variables both global also local variables and also using parameters that we're setting up in the function and we're sending arguments with the function when it gets called. Mm -hmm.